Hi loves, so here's our parenthetical in-text citations mini research lesson. And we are pretty familiar with this stuff already in terms of writing about literature, but this is just a quick overview of other kinds of sources and citations um, that you'll be doing. So MLA follows an author page format, which is basically the author first page or paragraph last format. So no matter what, you're going to see the author's name or title, if there is no author, um, before the end of the sentence, um, before the, the page number, really. So um, it might either appear in the sentence itself or in the parentheses following the quotation or paraphrase. But the page or paragraph number should always appear in the parentheses at the end, not in the text of the sentence. Um, and also, it's important that a complete citation is available for the readers um, on your Works Cited page, which we know about. So, um, what information do you need when you're thinking about how to internally, um, parenthetically cite your sources? You have to think about the, the corresponding Works Cited, which we've already done. Um, once you remove your annotations from your annotated bibliography, there you go. So the most important thing to think is whatever single word or phrase in the citation um, must be the first word in the left-hand margin of your work cited. So if it's the author's last name, that's great. If it's the first three words of a title because there is no author, fine. But whatever you see first on your work cited entry is going to be what's in the parentheses of your internal citations. Also consider if your citation will have the author's name or if there is no author. Um, like I just said, if there's an article or a chapter or a web page that doesn't specifically have an author, um, then you can just use the title. The second thing that you should think about other than the, the works cited page is the kind of medium. So whatever kind of source it is, whether it be web or print or whatever, is going to help you realize if there are page numbers, um, like here's an example from IMA, um, it's Eisner page 24, or maybe if there wasn't pages and it was just a paragraph number, it would be Eisner paragraph 24 if you use a non-traditional source. Um, I didn't put that in there because the Eisner example wouldn't work, but maybe it was a web page entry um, from the Red Cross, and so you would put the title of that instead. So here's an example from Eisner. One of IMA's example works cited entries is right here. And you'll see that the first word is Eisner. And therefore, every time I see this in the parentheses, um, if I don't state it earlier in the sentence, then it needs to be in the parenthetical um, entry. So the first thing that you can do, and, and this is you'll be able to see these in IMA's example paragraphs. She did author, last name, and page in parentheses. So um, in this sentence, embedded in high standards that Cole discusses is another idea, the idea of high expectations and rigors, rigor. excuse me, And that is taken from the Eisner source. Here's another Eisner quote. Um, the author in the sentence, uh, for the, at the first time of the paper, you'll see what she does, and then the page is in parentheses. So she writes, standards seem like a logical answer to reverse that decline. Without expectations for students, it is difficult to outline objectives to actually measure if the students can do the skills or if they are deficient. As Elliot Eisner, professor emeritus at Stanford School of Education, asserts. So by creating clear standards, lawmakers were sound in their thinking. So here she explains who Elliot Eisner is, and she took this right from her annotated bibliography. Um, and so she doesn't have to repeat his name here. She can just put where she found it, which was page number one. The other possibilities, the author's last name um, might be in the sentence later on in the paper. She doesn't need to put Elliot Eisner because she's already talked about him earlier. She could just refer to him as the last name. Um, and remember, we never refer to authors as their first name because they're not our friends. And it should always be what we see first in the works cited page. So let's take a look at this one. Opposite of positive reform, Eisner for, further argues that standards-based education actually blah, 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 blah. She puts his quote and then includes just the page number from which she got it. So that's the, the three of the ways that you can incorporate it and three different ways um, to parenthetically cite it if you choose those different 
approaches. So here are some different scenarios for some of you that don't have the simple author sources. So here's the first one. This is from the um, U.S. Department of Education source that we looked at in our group work in the library for IMS paper. And here she cited a poll from the, the website. Uh, because there is no author, she noticed she p uses the first three words of her citation. She doesn't do the whole title. She does the first three words. The Education Innovator. And then hers is a website. She didn't have pages, so she said paragraph 30. So that's how that looks. Um, one more, more than one author, um, three or less, whoops, um, you have, for example, and I just got these from um, at the OWL site, which I cited at the end of this lecture if you want to check it out. Um, but you guys know that it's connected to our Fusion page as well. So more than one author, three or less, you have Smith, Yang, and more argue that tougher gun control is not needed in the United States. Because we put all three last names, and that's what we're going to see, Smith is going to be the first um, entry in the Works Cited page, Smith. And these are all part of the same source. This, because we included it here, we only have to put the page number at the end. Here it is again, but in a different form with a quotation, this time without including the three authors in the sentence. Here they are at the end in the parenthetical citation. Um, some more different scenarios, more than three authors. Um, we use something called et al, which is Latin for and others. And oops, I forgot the parent, the close quotation, sorry. Um, here's an example. Legal experts counter their thesis argument by noting that the current spike in gun violence in America compels lawmakers to adjust gun laws. And that's Jones, which will be the first thing I see in the work cited. But et al indicates that there are more than three authors, and I would just need to look at the work cited page to figure out who those people are. Another different scenario is what if you have two works by the same author in your works cited page, which some of you do. That's really easy. Um, you just, instead of naming them by their name, you just use their title. Um, notice that this person used just too soon um, two of the, the, the first words in the title, and this was the three words in the title. So both of these are by Leitner, which you would be able to see in someone's work cited page. The other example is if you decide not to put Leitner or the author's name right in the text, you can just put, you would put it here. So like in this case, the, the author's name is Elkins, comma, visual studies. So if it was Elkins, comma, perspectives, that would be the other source. So you can ask me for further uh, information if you need that. What if you used a work that was quoted in another source? You would use QTD, which stands for quoted. Here it talks about Radfitch argues that high schools are pressured to act as social service centers, blah, 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 blah. Now this is quoted in Wiseman 259. This is the source that is in my work cited page. I'm not going to cite Radvich because I don't have his work. This person that is in my work cited page quoted this person. And so that's really important to note. Another scenario, um, or other scenarios, if, if you come to any kind of confusing ones, you can either ask me or just check out the MLA formatting and style guide at the OWL at Purdue. And here's the link if you want to copy and paste, and it's also um, connected to our Fusion page. So you're going to do awesome. Um, so just to recap, double check that all citations match the first word or words you see in your work cited. All sources in your paper must be represented in your work cited, and all paraphrases and quotations must be cited to avoid plagiarism. Good luck, and let me know if you have any questions.